thing. And then that C2H5 radical decomposes into C2H4, which is actually the thing that we sorry that we're that we're seeing there on the right hand side, plus a hydrogen radical. And that little hydrogen radical reacts back with the initial product, uh, with the initial reactant, C2H6. And C2H5 radical plus hydrogen. So it actually, this, well, this is the actual or the summary of the reaction. It doesn't really occur in those in that straightforward manner. It's actually a far more complicated system. However, these three reactions here occur extremely fast. So from a reaction rate perspective, we don't really need to consider them. Fortunately, they occur really quickly, and this reaction over here is the only slow reaction. Consider that slow reaction. And it's first order. So So in, in our modeling of the system, we really only need to consider this reaction. All these others down there occur extremely rapidly, and so they will not limit our, or will change our model at all. So this is common in, in, in multiple reaction systems. There will be one reaction that's typically rate limiting, and that's the reaction that we focus on and find the rate expression for. The other reactions occur so rapidly that we, we really are not constrained by their rates. So that just gives a bit of context for this, for this section. What we're going to look at in, in, in the next class and tonight's class is how we find these rate constants and how do we find those, those uh, powers in the rate expressions. So, for example, our aim is to find Ka and alpha in the rate expression This is our reaction rate expression, KACA to the alpha. Our aim here is to figure out what, are, what is that value of KA and what is that value of alpha in, in an experiment. For another example, if we had a second uh, sorry, uh, um, uh, two, two species, A and B, going to products. We could have CA to the alpha, CB to the beta. So we've got to determine three things. So we determine KA, mm -hmm. to alpha, and beta. So it's a, slight, it's a harder call. Yeah. And it can also appear in the, in the rate expression, yes. So there's a chance that there's a CV. Yeah, we're going to only consider the forward reaction for now. We're, we can easily consider the reverse reaction separately. Mm -hmm. and just flip the whole reaction system around and just redo the experiments going from products back to the reaction. Uh, I'll talk about that some now. We're going to start simple and do it. So our tool for all of this is the batch reactor. So before we launch into figuring out the methodology behind this, let's just quickly recap the batch, batch systems again. Um, so for a mole balance on a batch reactor, in my 
points out, plus generation is equal to accumulation. So for a batch reactor, that M is zero, we've got nothing leaving. Our generation is the rate multiplied by the volume, and accumulation for a mole balance is the number of moles accumulating through the time. So by definition, a batch reactor is not at steady state. And at constant volume, which is again another advantage of a batch reactor is that the constant volume can easily be guaranteed. The constant volume, we can rewrite that in terms of concentrations and say dCA by dt is equal to the rate Ra. So this is going to be the, the main tool that we use, is that expression over there. And you can see how clearly this function is of, of a rate on the right hand side and the concentration changes with time on the left hand side. So this is, this is why batch reactors are so great to use. Concentrations are very easy to measure. Time is easy to measure. Our rate is going to get plugged in over here on the, left, on the right hand side. And we're going to equate the things we measure, concentration and time, to that rate. Know that we will measure CA and time and relate this to the rate. We're going to, the, the, the plan here, if we're looking at this whole strategy of planning our approach, our plan here is to guess what our rate might be plug it in and see if it matches the experimental data that we measure from C, A, and T. So we will measure C, A, and T and relate this to the rate that we get. So we'll take a look at a few examples now. integrated term against time t. And if our guess was correct up here, so if our guess in step one was, was correct, we will see a straight line. Correct, we have to go back to step one again. So we have like you know that something that we can reference to Yeah, this is purely guessing and guessing and guessing. Yeah, we're gonna look at another method that, that is a little bit less guesswork. No, but we'll see now what happens. So we're going to plug RA in over here and integrate that. And then we're going to plot the integrated. We're not plotting RA, we're plotting the integrated time. We're going to look at this on right now. Thank you. 
Okay, so let's take a look at look at the example. If our reaction system was zero order, so so a zero order system. If we guess that our system is zero order, which is typical for biological systems, with my minus R A is equal to K, or R A is equal to K. So let's take my integral d c a by d t is equal to r a. d c a by d t is equal to minus k a. So I can integrate that on the left and right hand side, and I would get t is equal to the integral from c a naught, where I start my batch. So when I finish my batch, I'll get a final concentration of CA, CA over minus KA. Or another way of writing that is uh, minus KA times time is equal to CA minus CA naught. Or the final version here is CA is equal to CA naught minus KA times time T. So there I've done step two of my plan. Integrate the batch expression ECA dt. So I've integrated it and I get this, this term over this equation over here. Step, four, uh, step three in my plan calls for me to plot the integrated term against time t. So step three. Plot against time. In this case, I would plot the time t against which chart C A. So C A on my y axis, time on my x axis, so plot t against C A. And I will, should observe, so here, step four in my plan is correct. I'll get a straight line with slope of minus Ka. So I'll observe. If you were correct. If you were incorrect, there's going to be some significant curvature over there. It's going to deviate from the straight line. And also, um, the intercept will always be CA. The intercept will be CA naught.
one square at all, and you look at a next square, you actually had assignments with the software. Oh, okay. So you're all comfortable with Excel? Yes. Yes. Okay, because it's really a pity. It's so hard to use all calculus. It's a really good skill to have. Okay, so so what is the use of one of the data T and A C A? And if we were correct, we should observe a straight line over here. So the reason why I was asking about the statistical packages that you're comfortable with is one way to judge that degree there is to look at some output from your software. So for example, R squared, the correlation of evolution between following C and C A, is going to be a measure of the linearity of those lines. Okay, so R squared is one way to judge whether you had a good, a good initial choice. Let's take a look then at what a first order system would look like. So we've looked at a zero order system, the first order system. So the first order system minus R A K C A. Are you comfortable with this one? R A minus Okay, so tell me what's over here on the on the on the right hand side. T is the integral from C A naught to C A C A. So we could write that then as one alternative is minus C A is equal to the long C A minus the long C A. Or another way to say that is to plug the long and so this differs from the textbook, this is important to note. The textbook maybe will tell you to plot CA0 over CA against that negative sign is here. So let's just put this down and be clear. There's two alternatives. I prefer that we don't just simply memorize the formula from the textbook. So there's, this is one alternative. But the value of the looking at the textbook is to plot long CA more over CA is equal to plus A. So either, either approach works. You can use either one of those two. Simply the negative sign disappears. But please be aware of which one you choose so that you get the rate constants correct. The rate constant Ka by itself can never be negative. The rate constant is always a positive number. So if you get your signs wrong, you may end up with an incorrect sign in Ka there. And then if you go plug that into uh, polymath or MATLAB when you do your integrals, you're going to start to see some strange concentrations of time. So just make sure you, you figure out the correct sign. If we had to plot that now in step three and four, For three calls for plotting the integrated term against time. What should I plot here in this case? So plot T against. We always have T on my y on my x-axis. Okay, so always plot against time on your x-axis. So maybe let's add that to our notes over here. Now I always plot against time. This is my x-axis. Okay. My y-axis is the one that keeps changing. So what could be a suitable y-axis in this instance? Log CA over CA0 or log CA0 over CA. Okay, so let's take the textbooks one so that you can see the figures in the textbook. Log CA0 over CA against time t. And if you follow the textbook approach, you'll get a positive slope of Ka. Okay, so my slope here is Ka. 
plot T against the log of CA naught over CA. And again, if correct, you get a straight line of slope equal to plus K. And let's just uh, work through the second order system to, to complete the picture here. So for a second order system, let's assume my rate is KACA squared. to CA. So same approach every single time. You always follow this consistent approach, DCA, and in the denominator here is minus KA CA squared. <laughs> So if we integrate that, we get minus Ka times time is equal to minus Ca to the minus 1 plus Ca naught to the minus 1. Or well, if you write that in a, in a way that you're a bit more familiar with, 1 over Ca is equal to 1 over Ca naught plus Ka times time. So double check this map, make sure you're comfortable with it. Take A. 
and most of the products. <laughs> and when we're in a batch reactor, Okay, so just a second, just, just take this data down. To try this is off. In a batch reactor, we're going to look at this in the tutorial on Monday. Um, so in a batch reactor, we collect four time minutes. And CA is in moles per so it's 0, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250. And the concentrations reported at those values are 154, 114, 87. 76, 17, 58. Okay, so I'll leave you to, to try out to figure out if that's a zero order, first order, or second order system. So,